In this video, we're going to look at 10 differences between British English and American English. We're going to cover vocabulary, spelling, punctuation and grammar. The United States and Great Britain are two countries separated by a common language. Well, this is a famous quotation by George Bernard Shaw, and he was right. Let's start with vocabulary. Number one. Well, Americans would call that an airplane, but Brits would call it an aeroplane. And this, well, Americans would call it a cookie, but Brits would call it a biscuit. And look at this circle. Which way is it going? Well, Americans would say counterclockwise, while Brits would say anti-clockwise. And this, well, this is an eggplant. Unless you're British, then it's an aubergine. And there are lots. And here are some common ones. Americans would say aluminum, whereas Brits would say aluminium. And here are more. And some more. And a few more. We're not going to go through these. You can pause this if you want to have a look at them. Next, let's look at spelling. So number two. Brits tend to give a nod to the French from which these words originate. And this is where the O and the U come from. But Americans will spell it as it sounds, spell it as it sounds and so they will just fleet that U. So this without the U would be the American spelling. So we've covered colour, but there are more. Behaviour. Favour, honour, neighbour, odour and parlour. Let's clear that. Number three. With words like centre, Brits maintain some of the French again with an RE ending. But Americans will spell it as it sounds. And so they will switch those around. So this obviously would be the American spelling. So we've covered centre, but there are more. Fibre, litre, metre and theatre are some other common ones. Number four. With the I's sound, Brits tend to spell I-S-E. Well, it sounds like a Z, so Americans put a Z. So this typically would be the American spelling, but just be aware that this is getting more common in Great Britain now. And organisations like the BBC tend to use a Z these days. But we can still say this is the American spelling. So we've covered organise. Here are some other examples. Apologise, colonise, criticise, recognise and realise. S in the British, Z in the American. Number five. We're just going to make the point that there are lots of differences. But as a general observation, Brits tend to maintain some of the spelling from the original, typically French and Greek, while Americans tend to spell it as it sounds. So we're not going to go through all of these, but it is worth just looking at a few. So here we have the U-E ending. This comes from French while Americans will spell it as it sounds. And as a general observation, Brits tend to go for one L, while Americans go for two. That is not the case in the word jewellery, but generally that's true. And this NCE ending that Brits go for harks back to the French, whereas Americans will have NSE. The double M-E from the French, but not required for the pronunciation according to Americans, so that is dropped off. Then we have pyjamas, with a nod to the original Indian in the British spelling, but not in the American spelling. 
And then we have grey and grey, a common one, with the Americans opting for the spelling that sounds most correct. OK, next let's look at punctuation. Number 6. Do you know what these are? Of course you do. Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme. Now if we were to write those out in a sentence, Brits would write it like this. Notice that there is no comma before the and. This tends to be a British convention. But Americans would put that comma in. Oddly, this is known as an Oxford comma or a serial comma and it gets its name from the Oxford University Press. It's worth pointing out that some British do use the serial comma. Let's just make this point a bit clearer. So fish, chips and peas, most Brits would not use a comma there. But if we have burger shake and fries, well, Americans would ex Bear in mind some Brits would put one after chips as well. Number seven. Look at the punctuation in this sentence. If you're going to use myself, the subject of your verb must be I. Now, this is only about the comma and the full stop. Notice they are outside the quotation marks. This is a British convention. If we put up how an American would write it, you will see that the comma and the period, as Americans call it, are inside the quotation marks. This is quite a noticeable difference when you see British writing and American writing. So just to make the point, here we have yes, no and maybe written in the British way. And then yes, no and maybe written in the American way. So in the British way, we have the comma outside the quotation, mind the quotation marks, and we don't have a serial comma. In the American way, we have the commas inside the quotation marks and we do have a serial comma. Next, let's look at grammar. Number eight. Well, the British would call this a license with a C. But Americans would call it license with an S. Now, this might look like a spelling point, but here's why I've put it in the grammar section. When license is used as a verb, the British will use an S. But when it's used as a noun, they will use a C. The Americans, on the other hand, will use an S for the verb and the noun. So that's why that was a grammar point. It's a similar thing with the word practice. So here we have the British tennis player Andy Murray saying, I practiced seven days a week. That's a lot of practice. Notice that the verb is spelt with an S, but the noun is spelt with a C. Then we have Serena Williams saying, I practiced seven days a week. That's a lot of practice. The verb is spelt with a C and the noun is spelt with a C. So that is another difference that I've put in the grammar section. Number nine. The Brits and Americans use prepositions differently. So Brits will talk to someone say Monday to Friday, different to, write to me, at the weekend, for, we for weeks, and in a team. Whereas Americans would say, talk with someone, Monday through Friday, different than, write me, on the weekend, in weeks, and on a team. Just some small differences with prepositions. And then finally, Number 10. Look at this sentence. The PC which keeps breaking down is under guarantee. Which keeps breaking down? 
This is what's known as the restrictive clause, and it describes the PC. It identifies the PC. And this is fine in British English. But Americans would not use which there. They would use that. So when you have a restrictive clause, one that, one that identifies its noun, Americans will opt for that and not which without a comma. So just to make this clear, Brits do use that, but they also use which without a comma, and they are interchangeable. Americans do not consider them interchangeable, and where Brits would use which without a comma, Americans will use that. Okay, that's everything. We've covered vocabulary, spelling, punctuation, and grammar. Ten big differences. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out some of our other videos on GrammarMonster.com.